In James chapter number five, and if you want to follow along, most of the scripture will be on the screen. But we're going to talk about this morning, losing our faith. James chapter number five and verse number 19. The Bible says this, my brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, verse 20, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. We see James is a pastor and he's talking to these Christians and believers and uh, he says to them, he says, listen, I wanna tell you some things this morning uh, that will help you. And, he's, and we see the last part of James here where James takes some time to talk about to these believers oh, two things. Number one, what they need to realize and number two, what they need to know. So we're going we're gonna to study that together, what they need to realize and then what they need to know. And what James shared with them is the same thing that I'm going to share with you, what you need to realize as a Christian and what you need to know. Just, just so you're aware, nothing is different as far as Christianity back then as it is today. As Christians back then, God still had principles and promises and, and ways that he wanted them to to live, and those same principles and promises are exactly how God wants us to live today. So what James told these believers is for us in our life. Sometimes we come to church and we hear the message and we go, man, that's really good for the person behind me. I'm glad they're here. Especially if we know each other, right? You're like, man, you, you, you hear this and, and you know, the, the preacher is preaching and you're like, dear Lord, I pray you'd help Susie behind me. She needs this, Lord. Or maybe, you know, you have a spouse and you're, and you're saying, preach it, pastor, man, because I know you're doing a little, you're not going to elbow bump, you're not elbow bumping your spouse, but you are in your mind, right? You know what I'm saying? Okay, I hope he's paying attention, I hope he's paying attention. You know, all of a sudden you start to clear your throat, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Maybe you can get a little bold, you say amen, 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 right? Bob, listen, Bob, Bob listen, listen. And sometimes we can come to church and we can think that what is being said is for everybody else. And man, I'm glad they're here and I'm glad they need them. Boy, I'm really glad my spouse is here. I'm really glad, you know, they're, they're sitting here next to me because boy, they really need this and we can miss what God has for us. Let me just say this very clearly that what we talk about this morning is for everyone. No matter where you are in your life, it's for you a realization and a responsibility that you need to have. We see, first of all, it's already on the screen. We see that in verse 19, the capability of every believer, the capability of every believer. Look at verse number 19. It says this, it says, my brothers, if, any, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone bring him back. So let's break that down. First of all, we see that James is teaching us that we need to realize as Christians that at any moment, for any reason, any time, as Christians, we can wander away from the truth. We can be pulled away from the truth. Now, we have to understand who James is talking about here. There's two types of groups that he's talking about. He's talking about Christians who were close in the faith, were growing in their faith, but then for some reason they got distracted or deceived uh, to believe something else. And we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But there's also another group, you can go back there, Larry, thank you. There's also another, no, back, there we go. Go back to the uh, scripture there so I can read it. Uh, There we go. And so there's also another group that we need to talk about. Larry, he's he's telling me to get going here. He's got somewhere to be. I know it's Labor Day weekend. He's like, come on, pastor, let's go. Let's go with this thing, all right? I'm moving fast, Larry, as fast as I can. And, but, There's also another group that we have to understand, and I don't want to move forward until you understand the two groups that he's talking to. So we understand you can identify with a Christian who maybe has gone away from God, and maybe in other churches, I'm sure there's no Christians in this room who have ever been close to God and then got away, all right? But I'm talking about other Christians who, you know, they get close to God, and then something distracts them and pulls them away. They wander from the truth. This is, we can all identify with that in our lives at some point, but also he's talking about another group, and I want you to understand this group. This is a group that's been allured to Christianity, but are not yet Christians. You have to understand, back in this time, Jesus was like the the thing, man. I mean, it was like, do I follow the law or do I follow this guy, Jesus? And many people were abandoning the law, as we looked at in Galatians a couple months ago. They were abandoning the law to follow the grace and the gospel that was found in Jesus Christ and the truth of the gospel The problem was, though, is that many people were getting all hyped up about Christianity but did not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. They were getting excited about Christianity, but they had not yet been transformed 
by Christ. And James points out here, listen, there are some people among you, yes, they go to church, and yes, they maybe carry a Bible, and yes, they may listen to the Christian radio station, but they've not been transformed by Christ. They've just kind of been excited by Christ. They're not truly saved. I want to encourage you this morning to examine yourself. I'm not trying to get anybody to doubt their salvation. If you believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and he rose again from the grave and you've called upon him as your savior, my friend, you are saved. You know it. But I want to encourage you, just going to a church or having a Bible or listening to preaching or listening to the Christian radio station does not make you a Christian. You can surround yourself with Christian things. That doesn't mean it's going to seep into your heart. So many people, they miss eternity with God for 18 inches. It's in their head, but it's not in their heart. The Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not go to church, not read a Bible, not pray, not give money. You can give all the money to a church. You can, you can come to church every single week, but if there's never been a time in your life where you have personally ask Jesus Christ to be your savior, then my friend, no matter how much you surround yourself with Christianity, you are not a Christian. And James is talking to these people. And he's talking to them not because he's trying to point them out or try to, you know, weed them out. He's trying to help them in love. Understand that Jesus Christ will save you, that he will forgive you, that you don't have to be this perfect religious person who has everything right and does everything right in order for God to accept you. He already accepts you when he died on the cross and they put nails into his hands and to his feet. That was his way of saying, I love you, I accept you. And I want to encourage you this morning. If there's never been a time you say, well, I don't know, maybe, or I, I think maybe a long time ago I might have done something, or, you know, I really go to church, or you know what, I've been baptized. Listen, there are a lot of religious things that we can do in our lives, a lot of things that are filled with religion. We can be baptized, and we can go to church, and we can grow up in church, but none of that brings salvation. Salvation is simply when you make a decision, it goes back to the practical, when you make a decision to realize, I am not saved, I am not a Christian, I am a sinner, and I need to be saved, and you take a step, and you trust in Jesus Christ, as your savior. At the end of this message, I'll invite people to pray to accept Jesus Christ as their savior. I would encourage you, if you've never taken that clear step of salvation, I'm not saying you, you, it's, not, it's not wrong to necessarily say, oh, I've been baptized or I've been going to church. That's all good. I'm asking you a different question. Have you taken the step of salvation? Have you asked Jesus to be your savior? So James here is talking about two people. He's talking about those who were close to Christ but have wandered away. These are people that did not lose their salvation. They simply just wandered away from God. And then he's talking about people who have gotten close. And even though they're close into Christianity in their heart, spiritually, they've wandered away from the truth. And he says here, the capability of every believer, as in what are we capable of doing? Number one, he says this, that we, are, we can be distracted from the truth. We can be distracted from the truth. The capability is that we can be distracted. Here's the thing. Some people in this room, some people online, maybe with all that's going on around us in this world today, honestly, maybe you've started to lose your faith a little bit. Now, you would never admit that because that's not what good Christians do, right? They don't, they don't, they don't say that they're questioning God, you know, because you're a Christian and Christians are supposed to, you know, like be close to God and how dare we question God. But let's just say in this room this morning that there are maybe a few people in this room that maybe you're just kind of like, Maybe you're not outwardly saying it, but you're kind of like, hmm, what's going on? What? I just don't understand. I'm just not sure what's happening. And maybe for a moment, you're starting to lose your faith. You know, you're not like any other person in this room. No matter how spiritual you are, no matter if your title is pastor, there can come situations in our life that can shake our faith, that can get us to question God. And when that happens, we need to understand what is happening. What is happening when we lose our faith? We have to understand that sometimes we are, we can, we are being distracted from the truth. Look what it says in verse 19 again. It says, my brothers, if any among you, what's the word? Wanders, wanders. Think about that, wandering. That He uses that word very specifically. He's not saying he's intentional or has a strategy, but sometimes it's just a wandering. It's just kind of living with no direction, making choices without any foundation. If any of you wanders from this truth, let me say this, spiritual distraction is never a quick action. 
It's not like one day you wake up and you say, okay, man, I just love Jesus and I'm following him and I'm in the church and I'm growing as a Christian and then something happens or you hear a news report and you say, that's it. It's all over. I knew it was all a sham. I knew it wasn't true. I'm done. I'm never going to church again. Listen, spiritual distraction is not a quick action. Man, we're focused on God. We're focused on going to church. We're focused on being a good Christian. All of a sudden, something happens and it kind of gets our attention a little bit. And instead of focusing on God, we're kind of now just kind of like, do, you know, we try to do like one of these. Like, do you ever see like a little kid and he tries to look out both sides of his eyes, you know, peripheral vision, and he's like this, you know? He's like, my sons are like that. I'm not looking at you, Dad, you know? I'm looking over here, and I'm looking over here. That's how sometimes Christians are. That's what we do. We try to focus on God. We're like this. All right, I'm looking at God and what's going on around me. And sometimes we can allow ourselves to be distracted from the truth. He says, if any man wanders from the truth, a distraction, we kind of look over here just for a minute, just for a minute. We take our eyes. You know, it reminds me of a man named Peter. Remember Peter? Walked on the water, doing miracles. What did he do? The Bible says he just looked, just for a moment, just, just for a moment, he looked at the waves, began to sink. You see, sometimes in our lives, we can allow the news and we can allow the post and we can allow Facebook and we can allow all these different things. They're not bad, but they just... They just, just for a moment, take us away. And all of a sudden, we start to look at what's going on. And we don't realize it. Slowly but surely, we get distracted. We wander from the truth. You say, well, man, I, you know, maybe somebody else. No, no. James says, if anyone among you, it can happen to any one of us. You see how slow I'm moving? I can move slower if you want me to. Look, see how slow I'm moving? Just little by little. Little by little. Distracted. Distracted. You see, we're capable of being pulled away from the truth. The Bible says in James chapter 1 and verse number 14, it says, but each person is tempted when he is what? What does it say? Lord away. Lord away. Any fishermen in here? Any fisher? I, the, my hand is up, but that does not mean I'm a fisherman. All right, okay, I'm not. All right, I'll watch you fish. That's fine. I think it's great. If you want to go fishing, you let me know. Let me know when the food's ready. I'll eat it up, all right, okay? But what do we do? Fishermen, you know what I'm talking about? You put that in there. Lord, just slow. Lord away of his, of his own lust, of his own entire, and he's enticed by his own desire. Can I ask you a question? What is distracting you right now from trusting the truth. What is it? What news story have you overwhelmed your life with that is distracting you from trusting in what God said? Can I say this very honestly? I'm not mad at anybody. What I care about is what God says. I'm gonna say that again. What I care about is what God says. You say, well, yeah, but you know, they said last night, last night, I don't know if you heard, man, he, this, this one guy that I watch all the time, you know, he said this. What's distracting you from trusting the truth? Let me tell you something right now. Our world may change. All things may, I don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow, but one thing that never changes is the truth of the word of God. I know a lot of things have changed, but one thing has not changed. God has not changed. Change. I'll say it again. God has not changed. I know there's some things that look dark. I know some things don't look right. I know you're wondering what tomorrow may bring. Let me tell you what tomorrow is going to bring. Whatever God wants it to bring. And I'm going to trust in the truth of the word of God. I'm not going to let myself be scared and overwhelmed by fear and by news stories and by people that just want me to, you know, slow down and, and not, not live my life. Man, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And this morning, I want to encourage you in your life, don't get distracted by the stories. Don't get distracted by the fear. Don't get distracted by all the things around us. Trust in the truth of the unchanging word of God. Because when we trust in that, oh, I know, that's easy to preach. It's hard to live, isn't it? It is. Some of y'all to watch. You, some of y'all to watch your news channel with your Bible in your hand and just say, "All right, Lord, what? All right, all right, Lord, help me out here. Come on now, help me. I'm with you. Okay, all right, okay. Here we go. Oh, okay, let me find. And I, listen, I'm not trying to say it's easy. I'm just saying sometimes we get distracted. 
And I think a lot of people in this room, the reason why you're going to wander from the faith maybe is because you're allowing something to distract you. See, we can be distracted from the truth. Let me say this. We can be deceived by what looks like truth. The capability of every believer. Not only can we be distracted from the truth, from the word of God, but we can be deceived into what looks like truth. The Bible says in Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, it says, I appeal to you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause division and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them. For such persons do not serve our, our Lord Christ, but their own appetites, and by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Let me say this. We have to be careful. We have to be watchful. We have to be aware of the voices that we value. We have to be aware of the voices that we value. Because God says that we are capable of not only being distracted from the truth, but we are capable as believers of being deceived but by looks like truth. And so many people are walking away from the actual truth of the word of God because they are so convinced that what that guy says on that channel or what that post said in that news report is true. And we walk around and we, we, we have this doomsday mentality that says, oh man, the world is over, it's all done. You know, I heard this article and I read this and this person said this and I, they have a lot of followers now and I think they're, they're legit and I think what they said is true. The Bible says, let God be true and every man a liar. I'm not, listen, I'm not saying we're going to get a lot of claps here. I'm just trying to bring you back to the reality of the truth. There is some reality. And sometimes in our lives we get so hyped up about all these different things in our life. Oh, what's going to happen tomorrow? What's going to happen over here? What's going to happen over here? What's going to happen over here? I don't know. Why don't you just say this? Be still. God says, Psalms 46, be still and know that I am God. Can I just say it this morning? Some of you. I'm telling you, this is, this is your whole life, Monday through sir. This is, oh, man, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh, man, oh, 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 man. God says, can you just calm down? <laughs> he says, be still. You know why you do this? Because you're forgetting who God is. You're forgetting who God is. God is in control. He's the Alpha and the Omega. He's the beginning and the end. And some of you are so, you know what? Because you're convinced, you're convinced that what that person said or that article said is truth. You're convinced. And though you may be convinced, can I tell you in love as a pastor, you've been deceived by what looks like truth. Because if it goes against the Bible, it's not true. If it goes against the Bible, it's not true. If it goes against the Bible, it's not true. I'm telling you, we need to get back to the reality of what God said. We need to get back and stop scaring ourselves and scaring our families and getting all hyped up. <laughs> and just say, enough. God did not save you to live in fear and worry. Listen, God is sovereign. No matter what you do, you can plan all day long. What God wants to happen to you and around you will happen to you. Mm hmm It will happen. Well, you know, I've been, it will happen. And all I'm trying to say is that we got to be careful. What James is saying, realize this, believer, realize this, pastor, realize that if we're not careful in our lives, we can start believing things that look like truth. We can start being distracted by the truth. I'm not saying don't be wise. I'm not saying don't be cautious. I'm simply saying we need to return to the reality of Scripture. 
that God's word is what guides our life. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will let the word of God guide my life. And I will not make a decision outside of the word of God and what it says. The problem is sometimes we don't have time to be in the word of God because we're too busy ch ch chasing the next story. Now, this is Labor Day, all right? So, you know, I'm, saying, well, I'm just glad you're here, all right? Okay, I'm, I'm just glad you're here. I really am. I'm glad you're here. But there's some things we just got to say sometimes. And we got to get back into the word of God and find a reality in the scripture. We see that there are no exceptions to spiritual deception. There's no exceptions. James 5.19 talks about that. He says, if any, James 1.14 says, each person. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, in verse number 12, it says, therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. And in your life as a believer in Christ, do not think you're capable, do not think you're not capable of being distracted by the truth, from the truth. Do not think you're capable of being deceived by what looks like truth. James wanted them to realize that. He wanted them to realize, listen, you are capable of walking away from God. You are capable of deceiving yourself. And you need to return the reality of Scripture. But then we see a responsibility of every believer. We see the care for any believer. We see the capability of every believer. Distracted, deceived. But then we see the care for any believer. Verse 19 says this. It says, uh, if any of you wander from the truth, and it says, and someone... Bring him back. You see, God calls us as Christians to help people return to a truthful reality. That's what our responsibility is. People will wander. Oh, yeah, we got to realize that. You might wander. You might be deceived. You might be distracted. But then God calls us to look out among those who are being deceived, who are being wa wandering from the truth. And God calls us to bring them back to a spiritual reality. This could be bringing them back emotionally. This could be bringing them back spiritually. This could be bringing them back literally physically. <laughs> like, bring them back. Like, you're coming to church with me, right, to, uh, Sunday. And here's what happens. What happens is, let me tell you, you say, well, I don't know when to do that. Let me tell you, when somebody comes up to you and they say, hey, did you see the latest about this and what happens going on here? I think we all should just pack our bags and just, you know, move to Canada because, I mean, it's all over. Did you see this? That's right there, right there. Ding, 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 bells off, bells off. You say, mm, okay, God, someone's being distracted by the truth. Someone's being deceived by the truth. All right, my responsibility, let me bring it back. And when someone comes up to you and says, oh, did you see what happened? You know what our responsibility, James is telling us, our responsibility is to say, hey, remember, hey, 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 remember God's in control. See, this is the church working now. You see, what we do, though, is we feed into it. Let me forward me that article. I read five of them last night. Right? And now we got two people wandering emotionally, spiritually, maybe even physically. And then someone else comes, and then now two people go, did you see what happened last night? Did you watch? Did you watch what he said? I can't believe it. They had, a, they had an exclusive. And I watched the whole thing. I DVR'd it. And I watched it back and forward. And I watched it. And I'll tell you, it's over, man. I'll tell you what, we might as well just man, forget about it, man. Let's just shut her down. I'm selling my house. I'm moving on to a boat. I'm living in the middle of the ocean. Right? <laughs> Ain't going to take me. <laughs> I got them. <laughs> and then all of a sudden we go and tell our other coworker, and, and someone, uh, you're, and they tell you, they say, you see, you want to move in the boat with us? That's our opportunity to say, no, no, hey, listen, let me remind you, let me remind you, let me remind you, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. See, that's not as fun to talk about, but that's the truth. And what our responsibility is, is not to feed the fire of fear. This is what we do. As a pastor, you might be shocked, but people share with me all kinds of opinions. I must, I'm about to wear a shirt, right, that just says, tell me your opinion, right? Because people, they just cut, hey, pastor, I'll talk to you. Say, yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you hear about the thing? And I'll tell you, and, and this is the thing. I, you know, people, I had one guy drive by, I mean, I'll tell you, I was having a good day. I was having a great day. I mean, I'm a, I'm a positive person. I'm a positive person. This guy drove by, you know, good guy. 
And he told me everything that was going to happen. I, when I was done with that conversation, I was like, man, I'm just going to lay here on this ground and let the meteor strike me. I mean, because it's over. It's over. Called my wife. Hey, it's over, babe. I love you. See you later. The meteor's coming. Destroy the whole world and we're done. Right? And some of you live for those conversations. Oh, you ready to feed? Oh, yeah, I heard, man. Oh, yeah. Who said that? Was that Bill? Was that Tucker? Who was it? Oh, if he said it, oh, come on, oh, come on now. I'm going Labor Day weekend. We can say a couple of things, right? It's Labor Day, right? Okay, get a free time, right? Who was it that said that? Oh, they said it. And we feed the fire of fear. And I want to encourage you that God has not given you the responsibility to make people more fearful. God has given you the responsibility to bring them back to the reality of the truth of the word of God, to bring them back emotionally, say it's going to be okay, God's in control, hey, it's going to be fine, we don't need to fear, hey, I see you kind of being anxious, be still and know that I am God, why don't you come with me to church on Sunday, I'll sit next to you and we'll grow together, we'll find encouragement together, because I'm a little fearful sometimes, but I'm going to let that fear overwhelm me, hey, I want to bring you back, how about I pray with you, how about we meet for coffee and we read the Bible together, how about we sit in church together, how about we join a small group together and let's encourage each other. I know sometimes we get pulled away and we wander from the truth and distracted from the truth. But let's come together as friends, as believers. I'm not going to let you wander in that fear. I'm not going to let you wander in that anxiety. I'm going to be someone who is responsible to bring you back. Bring you back. Bring you back. We see the care for every believer. You see, it's an awareness of the absent. See, in order to bring them back, you have to notice they are gone. This is what a church is all about. We have church. People come, people go. And what we do is we are, and I say this in love. I say this in love. We are so wrapped up in our desires and what we want in our life that the person next to us could be going through an awful time and we don't even notice they're gone. Mm -hmm. we, we don't even pay attention because I'm here for me. This is about, I don't know if you, this is about me. It's about what I need. What about the person next to you? I think about Pastor Andrew who shared his story. I told him, he told me he's going to share the story. I said, share it. Because you never know what someone's going through. You never know what someone's going through. I promise you. As a pastor, I've been blown away by the stories and the difficulties and the trials that people have gone through. And what they need is not someone next to them to tell them how bad it's going to be. They need someone to step up and say, I know it's not good. I know things could be better, but man, I'm not going to let you wander anymore. I'm going to notice when you're gone. Who around you is not here? Who around you in your circle of influence, have you heard them just talk and talk and talk, and instead of trying to reach out to help, you say, ah, it's oh, crazy, crazy lady on Facebook again. She's posting something about something. Right, oh, there, there she goes again, talking about this. You know what she's doing? She's crying out, someone bring me back. Someone bring me back. And that's our responsibility. Because in order to bring them back, we have to notice that they are gone. You see, the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 4, it says, let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. It's, it, the Christian life, if we are truly to live it the way that Jesus wants to, then we will find ourselves realizing it's not about us. We're Christians, right? We're supposed to be like Christ, right? We're supposed to follow Christ. What, what the Bible says, Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 9, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus, who being the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, not about me humbled himself and became obedient unto death. And so many times we walk into church and we go, I guess they didn't consider me in all this. Well, I didn't know it was about you. 
I didn't know it was about. I didn't know that we were trying to do everything to make sure you're happy. There are people going through trials. There are people going through tragedies. There are people that are dealing with all kinds of stuff. And all we can think about is what I want and what I need and what, what my needs are met. Listen, this is not a, a drive through service here. This is not something we go in and we say, okay, whatever you want. You want pickles? We'll give you pickles. If you want a bun, we'll give you a bun. If you want this kind of fries, we'll give you fries. Listen, we're going to preach the truth of the word of God and we're going to help those who are hurting. And listen, if you want it to be all about me and all about me and all about about me and all about me this is not the church for you because Jesus lived a life that was not about him at all and so we're going to follow the Lord's example and we are going to do what God calls us to do and we are going to be people who are looking I'm doing all kinds of moves today it's labor day this is what we do right this is what we do I'm telling you, I wake up every morning, I'm telling you what, as a pastor, God, give me the strength. Because as long as God gives me breath, and I believe together as a church, what we need to do is when someone's coming in the door, oh, oh, someone's coming. Look, we're looking. Maybe they're, maybe, they're, maybe they're discouraged. Maybe we can encourage them. Maybe they need some help. Maybe we can help them. Maybe we can pray with them. We ought to be a church. Listen, God's called you not to say, mm, okay, I guess this is how it's going to be around here now. Huh. Okay. All right, well. We'll see how long I put up with this stuff. You know. Yeah, yeah. You can have that. You can have that. Because there's people coming through the door. By the way, I said there's people coming through the door. Now, praise God, every week they're coming through the door. New people, hurting people, lost people, people who are deceived. We had a man get baptized last Sunday who didn't know Jesus Christ as his Savior. He came in and he didn't, I'm glad he didn't meet someone and said, well, you know, I'm glad you're here. But, you know, I tell you, what's going on here, I don't really like it. And in his mind, he's going, man, I just, I don't care what it is, I just need some help. I just need some help. I just, I just need someone to love me. I, I don't know what to do. And what we need to be as Christians, oh, look at the one over there. Oh, go. hey, hey, come on over here. Come on over here. You want to sit with me? Hey, you want to sit with me? Sure, right here, right here. Okay. <laughs> Got one. All right. Hopefully God works in our life. Okay, okay. I'll tell you what. This is what we need to be. Our responsibility. You see, we need to be aware of the absent. We need to be accountable for the absent. See, there must be a place where people can connect face to face. There must be a place where people can connect face to face. There must be a place where people can come in and go, is it okay if I'm not okay? Or is that not what this church is about? Because there's a lot of people not okay right now. There's a lot of people hurting. And there's got to be a place where they can come in and feel like, man, I'm just accepted for who I am. I'm ready to grow and learn. This is what God's called us to. Can I say this? God wants us to build purposeful relationships. He wants us to build purposeful relationships. The Bible says in Galatians chapter number 6 and verse number 2, I'm jumping around here, Larry, a little bit. Sorry about that. It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Galatians chapter 6 and verse number 2. It says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. I'm almost done this morning. But let me say this. People get closer to the church when they get closer to the people of the church. That's what it's about. This is not a museum for perfect Christians. This is a hospital, man. It's a hospital for the broken, for the hurting. And that's what we're going to do. You say, well, I want, it, I want it to be all about me. I'm going to say this in love. I'm going to say this in love. But God did not give us the great commission to reach the world so that when we reach you, we stop. How many, how many people, how many people have, to, I'm going to say this, and I, I'm saying this in love. If you're new here, this is it's Labor Day weekend. How many people have to die and go to hell to make you happy? I'm not trying to be mean. 
I'm just saying. We can't hesitate. A.W. Tozer said, a scared world needs a fearless church. And we can be fearful or we can be fearless. And I'm just choosing as the pastor to be fearless. And to say, God, whatever it is that comes through, whatever it is that comes down, God, we stand on the word of God. We preach the word of God and we will love people where they are. We will love them, we will accept them, we will help them because if there's somebody in this room who's hurting, who's going through a difficulty, we want to share with them the love of Christ. You know why? Because I'm glad when I was hurting and when I was overwhelmed and when I was broken, someone reached out to me. Someone offered me a seat. Someone didn't care how I was dressed. Someone didn't talk about the color of the lights. They just said, hey, you're wandering? Come on in. We're looking for you. Come on in and find God's love. Come on in and find God's grace and let God transform your life. I'm glad somebody did that for me. I'm going to spend the rest of my life by the grace of God doing it for any single person that walks through that door. This is like, none of this is in the message actually, you know, it's kind of crazy. It's just like, I'll just, let me start over, okay. In James chapter number five, I'm joking, I'm joking, okay, I'm joking. But we see here, <laughs> we see here that there's a care for any believer. All I'm trying to say is we need to care for people. We need to love people. These people are hurting. They're wandering. We see the capability of every believer. We see the care for any believer. And then we see the communication from other believers. Look at verse 20. It says, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Now, this is interesting, okay, and I, I know I appreciate the grace to give me a little more, a few more minutes here. I got to take the time to explain this because when you read it right away, you're kind of like, oh, that, that makes sense. Okay, you know, whoever's bringing them back, you know, seeking, right? Yeah, they should know they're doing something good. But James really is specific here, and I want to identify the three people that he talks about here. He talks about the wanderer. So we already talked about if anyone wanders from the truth, that's one person. Now, follow along with me. That's one person. Then he talks about if someone brings them back, that's like the seeker, right? So someone's wandering, someone's seeking. But then in verse 20, we see he adds a third person. Because it says, let him know, who know, that whoever brings back a sinner. Wait, let him know. Well, who's supposed to let the person bringing back the person know? So there's the wanderer, there's the seeker, and then there's the supporter. What God is saying here is that as people wander from the truth, our responsibility is to bring them back. But then there's another responsibility to encourage the person who's trying to bring them back. It's very interesting here. I love this. We see the communication that God says there ought to be continual encouragement towards the one who is seeking. That as a, as a believer in Christ, your responsibility may be to try to help bring people back. All of our responsibilities is to encourage those who are trying to bring them back, to pray for those and to encourage those. So there's the wanderer, there's the seeker, and there's the supporter. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful picture here of, of what I would say missions. Missions. Next week we're going to start Missions uh, Sunday. We're going to go three weeks on reaching the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's powerful. I'm excited about it. And really, God just gave me this picture here of there's the wanderer. There's people that are far from God. There are people trying to seek that person. And then there's people who try to encourage the person that is seeking that person. That's a beautiful picture of what I call missions. Because we have to understand, what is our role? How do, if God's called us to reach the world, how do we reach people like in other countries? Are we, are we supposed to go to that? No. God says right here that we're supposed to encourage those who are willing to go. And if there are people who are willing to seek those who have wandered away, then our job is to encourage those and to support those who are willing to seek out those who have wandered. What he's saying is this, is that in the church, in the church, the church gets a negative rap. Come to church. How many people, you know, you say, man, I've had a bad church experience. A lot of people have had bad church experiences. That's not the way that God designed it. God designed the church to be this, this nest and this 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 place of continual encouragement. 
where what we are doing is we're focused on the mission, we're focused on the vision, we're focused on what God has for us, and as we seek those who are lost, what we need to be doing is cheering on those who are going after. Woohoo! yeah, man. I'll tell you, like when someone walks in with their friend and they're like, hey, this is my friend, you know, I brought them from work, like there ought to be in the corner like a little high-five party. Yeah! Good job, man. It's way to go. It's right. It's awesome, man. Go get another one, right? Because the, the problem is that sometimes we don't want to bring people to church because they might meet the people at our church. And you're like guiding them through the maze. All right, don't talk to that person. No, no, don't talk to that Hey, girl, hey, <laughs> we're going, okay, hey, hey, no, 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 right? But what if, what if every single time, what if every single time we gather together and we saw people here for the first time and we saw decisions were being made and we saw guests coming in and we saw people making spiritual decisions that we weren't like, when is this going to get over? What if we were like, man, look what God is doing. Hey, man, you brought your friend to church? Yeah, great job. Hey, man, you're praying for someone to get saved at your work? I'm praying too. Man, I want to encourage you as you seek. I want to be a friend to you and an encouragement. And what God is saying is this, is that so many times we get so distracted by all the things that we want out of church. And God said, I never built the church for you. I'm not going to make the church all about you. It says, upon this rock, I will build my church, not your church, not their church, not your buddy's church. I will build my church. And God's focus for his church is to reach People And when God brings somebody in like you're already in, now your turn is to go and turn around and go out those doors and say, hey, I'm already here. I'm already growing. I've already been accepted. Let me go out and find somebody else. And then when you see somebody going out there to find somebody else, you go, yeah, yeah, go, go get them. Go get them. Go get them. I'll keep the seat warm. You go get them. And we see God's church thrive. Why? Because it's not about us. It's about what God has called us to do. And so we need to constantly, constantly being encouraging, encouraging, encouraging. This is what God says. So maybe you're here this morning, kind of lost your faith. You feel like things are not going the way you thought. Can I bring you back to the reality of the truth? That what God says is true. His word is true. Let God be true and every man a liar. Maybe this morning, honestly, you realize that, you know what, man, I've not been on the mission. And I need to focus on what God's called our church to do. And whether I'm an encourager, whether I'm a seeker, I just want to be a part of what God is doing. Maybe that would be you this morning. I know life is difficult right now, honestly. But no matter what you're going through, Don't get distracted. Don't be deceived. Come back to the reality of the word of God. And be reminded this morning that God hasn't changed. That he hasn't stopped loving you. He hasn't forsaken you. He's right there. And church, may we be a group of people that are looking for those who have wandered away. To bring them back to the loving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Can we pray together? Lord, we love you so much.